All right. I am with my guest this week, Eugene Kachalov, Ukraine's all-time money leader. Um, look, where this is poker, but what we're going to talk about is beyond yeah. poker in this instance. Um, the poker world was um, paying attention to your Twitter feed as you uh, escaped Ukraine amidst the war. It was a dicey there for a little bit. Um, we'll get into all of that, but how are you doing right now? Thanks, Ed. Yeah, it's it was uh, it's been a scary 72 hours. I, I mean, it feels like I'm still in a dream. I mean, now I literally like a few hours ago, we moved into an apartment in the middle of Budapest. And and it's fascinating. It feels like you're kind of everyone's kind of walking around and normal life. It feels like nothing's happening. People are laughing. And, and it's it's almost like like, wow, people don't realize what's happening literally next door. And, and I realize that until you actually feel feel it yourself, until you actually um sense that your life is in danger you you can't truly comprehend uh, what's going on so i'm okay um and uh, you know as soon as as soon as i felt okay uh i think it's and it's not just not just me but like literally everyone who, who i meet is kind of like okay what can we do now what what can we do now to help others who, who are going through this so that's what we're focused on now sure and what what was the timeline like where you were in kiev and you just like did something happen that spurred you like we got to get the hell out of here um, I know you're very politically uh, inclined. We've talked about this in the past where, you, you know, you keep an eye on such things. And um, at what point did it become obvious that you're, you and your family just needed to get out of there? Sure. Well, look, the pressure kept building, um, you know, with, 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 you know, with the U.S. government kind of, you know, giving all these warnings. But um, and then Ukraine was saying something else, you know, and then I just kind of like I was trying to weigh different different. Um, variables to see you know, what are the odds of this is actually going to happen. It seemed like in Ukraine, all our friends, it just seemed like, you know, they're not going to invade. They're not going to like invade Kiev. Like, like we should be safe. Like maybe the worst that can happen is some sort of terrorist attack or something, you know, just to kind of destabilize the situation and, and to get the Ukrainian government to, um, uh, uh, to agree, to, to capitulate to something. So we just didn't expect we, no one expected that it would get this bad. Um, and then, you know, another variable that I was using, I was like, well, I see the U.S. is pulling out their diplomats, but China is, for example, keeping their diplomats. So I was like, well, I mean, considering Russia's Putin's relationship with China, if they're keeping their diplomats, you know, inside the country, are they really going to invade? Are they really going to start bombing, you know, Kiev? So, um, so there were definitely there was a lot of doubt in my mind. I, you know, I didn't expect it would get this bad. But at the same time, I thought it's it's definitely smart to be ready in case something does happen. So we were definitely making preparations uh, in case, um, you know, the 1% happens as we saw it then. So some of these preparations were things like, well, for the last like two weeks, we said, you know, every, we have to make sure we always have a full you know, gas, uh, gas tank in the car in case, you know, we need, we need to go west. Um, we should get all of them, you know, the most important uh, papers together, like passports, marriage certificate, maybe like, you know, some valuables, you know, whatever it is, so that uh, get it all in one place, um, put it in the bag so that you can just grab it and run if you need to, if things really do get, you know, get bad. So we did that as well. Um, and actually, you know, literally on Wednesday night, uh, Thursday morning was when Russia invaded. Wednesday night, uh, we got together with friends to actually plan what, where we would go together. So we were thinking we would go like west of the country somewhere. Uh, again, we didn't think it would just invade. We were just like, maybe we'll just go to the west of the country for a couple of weeks to just sit this out in case something does, just, just not to be in a big city, you know? Um, so that's kind of what we were debating um, on Wednesday night uh, is, is, is to go, is to go west. Um, but then someone else came and we saw like every hour, the situation was just getting worse and worse and worse. And then I remember we got home, um, that night, maybe around one in the morning or two in the morning, we got home. We were pretty nervous, but we went to sleep. And then at five in the morning or five 30 in the morning, my wife got a call from, from one of the friends that was with us that, you know, invasion, invasion started. And, and, you know, I checked on my Twitter and it was just like, oh my God, it's go time. I, I can't believe this. It's go time. So we literally jumped out of bed. Um, you know, uh, just started packing, uh, just a bare minimal, like we just got like, you know, like sport, sport clothes. I just got a couple of sweaters, like just some, maybe some underwear, like you put my computer, uh, chargers, so just, you know, I actually had a list ready of the most important things that I need. So we were able to pack in a half an hour, just the most, you know, the bare, bare essentials. And we quickly got out. We, we quickly drove, 
uh, to my wife's office just because she had some, to her business. Um, so she, she had some cash that she picked up there. She, you know, she, uh, she's got 40 employees also like girls that, you know, didn't know what to do. So she gave him like two months salary right up front. I, again, we didn't know what's going on, but we just knew we had to leave. Um, so at around seven in the morning, we started to head out. We, we spoke to our friends. We agreed that we should meet about 35 kilometers away from Kiev at our friend's parents' home who, who, who invited us to go. Uh, so we just knew we needed, we needed to get there. Um, uh, so we started making our way out. You already saw a panic in the streets. You see, you see kind of people kind of, you know, moving around. Everyone's kind of nervous and, you know, trying to get to, trying to do whatever they can. No one knows what to expect, right? I called the U.S. Embassy um, both in Poland and Romania. And I was like, what do you guys recommend? And they were like, we just recommend you get to the border. We cannot help you there. You need to, be, you need to make your way out. And my wife is like, well, we need, whatever we do, we just need to make our way out. That's, that should be, you know, our mission, you know, get all our friends, as many of them and, and, and just make our way out. So I was like, all right, let that, that, that's what we have to focus on. That's when we have to go. Uh, that's, that's all we can focus on. So um, at that time, so we, we ended up driving out of Kiev. We didn't hit too much traffic getting out of center, but then we did hit traffic already. Traffic was starting to build up around 7.38 in the morning. Um, uh, thankfully, like Waze and Google Maps was still working. So it only took us about two hours, you know, two and a half hours to, to get to that place. Uh, we met with our friends and, you know, this family invited us. They were incredible. And we've never met them before. You know, they treated us to food. I mean, they just helped us in every way. It's just incredible because you know, we don't know how long we're going to be with them. You know, they're, they're just kind of cooking food for us and making us feel comfortable. And our plan originally was like, well, should we keep going or, sh or should we stay? Maybe we should, you know, stick it out because we we're in the middle of nowhere. We we're like, it's probably not going to get bombed here. We're probably not going to see any tanks here. There's really nothing here. It's just, you know, we're in the, in the middle of nowhere. Um, so we were considering to stay, but then there were really like, you know, nerve wracking moments. We saw, we heard airplanes go above us. We heard explosions in the distance, like really big explosions in the distance. We, we saw two helicopters fly right above the house. It's really nerve wracking. So there were a couple of times where we ran to the basement, you know, not knowing what to expect um, just in case. Um, and as it was, a, as we rented a hotel. There was a, a small little, you know, village hotel nearby. Um, and we thought, okay, well, we don't want to impose on, this, impose on these people. So at least we could, you know, you know, rent, uh, you know, a couple of, a couple of rooms just to at least sleep there and, you know, spend the day with them. So, um, we planned to spend, you know, probably at least a couple of nights there. Uh, but then as it was getting closer to the evening, the situation just kept getting worse and worse. And we were thinking maybe we should head West. Like basically the, the, the reason why we did, we, we were hesitant, hesitant to go to the border was we were afraid there was going to be no gas because, mm -hmm. Coming out, coming out of Kiev, gas stations were empty. So, and you have to understand from Kiev to the closest border, I think it's around 600 kilometers. So that's about 400 miles. Um, so one, you know, one gas tank is not enough. Um, you, need, you need a little bit more. Um, so we just weren't sure if we could actually make it. And then God forbid we get stuck in traffic, you know, like, and we heard those massive traffic piling on, then you would definitely not make it. And with no gas. So we were like balancing, okay, do we want to, you know, do we want to stay here and risk not getting out ever? Or do we want to get stuck on the highway with right. no gas and nowhere to go and not even close to the border? So like, what do we do? There was no, there was no easy decision. Um, uh, but as it was getting closer to, to, to the evening, we realized, I think we need to risk actually, you know, we need to risk it. We need to keep moving. Um, honestly, like, this, this, uh, I, I was kind of remembering the movie as I wrote, as I wrote in the essay, I was remembering this movie, you know, World War Z, you remember with, with Brad Pitt, like, he right. kept, you know, when he went, you know, he said movement is life. And that kept, you know, coming to my mind that like movement is life, we, we need to keep moving. Um, so, so we decided that, okay, we were, we were really exhausted. We, we were barely on any sleep. We we're like, let's get a, li a little bit of sleep. It was also like military curfew. So you shouldn't be outside in, at, at night at that time. So we decided let's sleep. And at five in the morning, we're all going to wake up and we're going to head out and we're, we're going to start heading west. So when you um, say we, who, who is it at this point? Oh, is it just you and your wife or is there more people at this point as well? So at this point, it's me, my wife, um, who, who came on one car. There was uh, another friend of my wife's that came on her SUV. We had a sedan. Uh, then uh, there was another couple, uh, a guy and a girl who came on their SUV. And then another of my, uh, of my wife's friend came. She was coming from Kharkiv, actually. So she met us a little bit later um, uh, that day on her SUV. And uh, one of the things we were considering was, you know, with the gas situation, 
I didn't want to take um, I didn't want to take my car because it's a sedan and I had some problems with the tire. So I just thought I wouldn't make it. And also considering the rough roads in Ukraine on the west side, my car, it was just I, I was just afraid it was just going to break down. So we were like, let's leave my car behind. Like, you know, at that point, you don't care about anything. You just want to you just want to you know get out. And we were like, can we siphon gas out of my car and put it into tanks and just take it with us? So we tried that, and unfortunately, Mercedes has you know this protection that that you can't siphon gas out of. So so we couldn't do that. But anyways, we decided to leave my car behind um, and take the three SUVs um, uh, and and start heading together. Uh, we just thought like it, it's obviously much safer to go together. Also, like in case one car breaks down, so you can just leave it behind and you know jump into into um, into the car of the others and just you know just keep going, like just making sure not to stop. So so yeah, so that that was. That was kind of how that went, and and you know, in the next morning, um, you know, uh, things got real because right away we hit the first checkpoint, and you know, we literally like it's it's still dark, you know, it's five thirty in the morning, and there's like literally like um, concrete bricks on the road, and like guys with guns, and you know, and I mean, scared faces. So it, it, it's it's very nerve wracking, and you don't know what they're gonna say. You, you don't know if they're gonna like try to rob you. You don't. I mean, you don't know what's gonna happen. You know, they check of, their IDs. Yeah, and kind of along those lines, um, look, it, when you're, you're Ukraine's all-time poker money leader, if you look at Hendon Mob, if somebody were to look you yeah. up, they're going to see that, you know, by Hendon, you've won $9.2 million, you know, yeah. even though you haven't been full-time poker. And if somebody Googles your name and those kind of circumstances, there's got to be a little bit of worry, right? Like, man, I hope these guys don't try to rob me, take me hostage or something, Absolutely. thinking thinking I have $9.2 million on me or something. That's absolutely, that's a good point, because if someone, you know, if someone does recognize me, if someone just happens to be, you know, a poker fan and they recognize me, they might think I have, you know, I have all this cash on me, so maybe it's a good time, you know, <laughs> it's a good time to get their hands on some of this cash, so yeah, uh, absolutely, um, that is definitely a concern, and, um, but thankfully, they just kind of, you know, um, they just looked at my passport, they're like, oh, okay, I mean, and, and, you know, they looked at, you know, the women that were with us, and like, hey, you guys, you guys can go, and I think they were just making sure that we're not like Russian Russian agents, um, sure. because that's what that was actually what was happening uh, before Russia officially invaded. There were forces already coming in undercover uh, from Russia, um, trying to uh, trying to enter. Um, and we we had a we have a friend. My wife has a friend who's a sergeant in the like think of it like a Ukrainian version of the FBI, and his job was actually to catch uh, like saboteurs, uh, Russians, you know, in Kiev. So, you know, we were warned about that. Um, what, what inspired yeah. you throughout this entire journey that you went through, this just crazy, unspeakable journey to document it and share it with the world via Twitter? So uh, basically, when, as soon as we made the decision to, to leave, I thought, what, you know, what can I do to bring light to this situation? Because this was so scary and so horrific. And, and you know, how how, what's the best way that I can actually help this, right? So I figured, okay, look, I have some social media following. I have some, some fame, maybe by bringing light to the situation, maybe in some small way, uh, more people can see this, more people can push on their governments to actually help, you know, resolve this or, you know, something, or at least kind of show the truth, the underground truth of what's happening and not let Russia kind of spin it or, you know, or uh, uh, spin their own truth out of it. So I just thought I could be one voice out of many and um, and use my following for that. So I was like, so I just wanted to kind of document my, my, my situation and, um, and just kind of <laughs> get people uh, inside my mind for, for two days sure. as, to, as to what we're going through. I've seen a lot of people, you know, reaching out to you and interacting with you on social media as you were posting this stuff. Did, um, you know, that support help you in any way? Were anybody, uh, you know, able to relate any information or anything like that that was useful? It was honestly, it was extremely helpful. Honestly, like I felt, it's weird to say, but I felt the support. There were so many people who were reaching out to me in private and they were saying, what can I do? Like, you just, you know, everyone's thinking of you. We're just wishing you the best. It was so incredible. And it was actually like, it was almost like, pushing me to keep sharing more so that because I know people are following and supporting me and um you know and uh yes yeah, honestly just I have so many people that that reached out and, and offered their support and, and thinking of how to support others um you know I, I mean at the time uh you know as we're driving out of you know as we're kind of it took us what I mean it took us over 20 it took us maybe 48 hours to get out at that time you're just kind of focused on 
you know, getting to the board, you're not, people are asking me, what are you planning to do afterwards? Well, like, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just, for now, I just need to get out. I don't care. I don't care how we just need to, we just need to actually cross the border. Um, and then event, you know, because it was, it was really a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, we, we literally, we, we like uh, maybe four hours into our trip, we saw a massive explosion on the way to Odessa, like a massive explosion in distance. I mean, it just, it was like so nerve wracking. And then we saw all these like military trucks coming towards us and we we're like, oh my God, what if, you know, what if a jet is, is you know, a military jet is going to start attacking right as we're, you know, passing by these like military units um, uh, driving towards, towards Kiev, to, you know, to protect Kiev. So um, really, really nerve wracking. And every time as we're moving closer and, clo you know, as we're passing each city, you know, my wife is sitting there checking news and we hear that, oh my God, this city was bombed. Oh my God, they're bombing this village. So it just seemed like they're right behind us. It just seemed like they're right, right behind us. And we're like, you know, every every minute counts. There's, you know, there's no time to waste. It's, uh, I was looking back at some poker news content that, that had you uh, featured. And in 2015, there was an article uh, by Giovanni Angiani. And in it, you talk a lot about, uh, you know, the relationship between Russia and Ukraine at the time um, about essentially being a political war that you hope that, you know, they would be able to to patch that up and, and find a way to peacefully resolve the conflict. So it seems like you've been aware of, um, you know, the Ukraine and Russian conflict for, for many tension. years. Yeah. Right. The tension, yeah. I guess. And did you ever think, I mean, it would get to this point? I know we said at the top of this talk, you kind of thought, yeah, maybe it's a possibility, but is it real? Are they really going to invade? And, and then now here we are. There was certainly tension. I mean, because in 2014, that's when, you know, the Russians took Crimea, right? And then, and then you know, basically took Donbass region as well. So there were, that's when, you know, all relationships were kind of severed, you know, with, between Russia and Ukraine. But still, like, you just never thought that it would get to an invasion. It's just so hard to fathom. It's just like, it's a, it's a huge, you know, Ukraine is a huge country. There's over 40 million people there. Um, I mean, it's a European country. I don't know. It's just it just seemed unfathomable that that it would be like a pure invasion. So so no, I I definitely did not expect that. But you know, honestly, I don't think anyone did. And I think the biggest proof that no one expected this, the biggest proof, is how both the 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 foreign exchange markets and how the ruble, uh, how much they dropped as soon as this happened. So so the proof is basically like if there were people who expected this, obviously, you know, there, there would have been a drop already before that. But considering how, how massive the drop was and how big the reaction was from Europe as soon as it happened, I think no one expected it. So I, I, I suspect it was literally like, you know, just a few people knew and, um, and that's it. I know uh, in the mainstream news, uh, somebody who's kind of stood out and has talked about a lot is the Ukrainian president, Volodymyr Zelensky. Um, you've yeah. tweeted about him, you know, as a Ukrainian and him being the president during this time. You know, what's your perception of of how he's, uh, you know, being a leader in, in these circumstances? Yeah, so look, so to, to be honest with you, me and a lot, like all my friends, a lot of Ukrainians, he had a really low approval rating, you know, for, for ever since he's been president. Like everyone's just kind of disappointed with him. Um, so we were, you know, so we were like, just no one really knew what to expect, but no one really expected much. But I mean, it's just, it's incredible how inspiring he's been and, and, and how, how much of a 180 uh, degree turn he's done, you know, and how much, how much of a leader he's been and how, uh, not just as a leader, like just the way he's been, you know, kind of reaching out to other leaders, the way he's been, you know, at the front, you know, leading, he's not escaping. I know the U.S., you know, offered him to, to escape. He didn't escape. He's just kind of, you know, staying ground and kind of leading from the front. He's just so inspiring. Um, and, you know, I think he inspired a lot of Ukrainians and, and it made me think like how, how important it is actually to have an inspiring leader, how, how unifying it is for people to have someone to follow. Um, and that's something that has been really, really evident. So, so I've become a huge fan of his. I think everyone's a huge, you know, everyone I know from Ukraine is, is an absolute huge fan of his. And, um, I think he's an absolute hero and, uh, you know, I, I see the whole world supports him and, and I hope to God he, you know, he survives through this. And I, and I think he might become, you know, one of the most popular leaders uh, in the world, you know, if he can make it through this. Uh, as you were fleeing and heading towards the border, I know news broke that Ukraine had said all males aged 18 to 60 uh, couldn't leave the country, um, that they would be serving in the military during this conflict and in, in war. Um, 
you, you got across the border at Hungary at around the same time. What is kind of the scenario there? I know you're a U.S. citizen as well, you know, with a U.S. passport and stuff. Was there any issue, you know, getting across, you know, given those circumstances? No, I'm, I'm only a U.S. citizen. I don't, I, don't oh, have Ukrainian, okay. I don't have Ukrainian citizenship. So, you know, I, I have the right, uh, basically, I have a paper that allows me to live in Ukraine, but I'm not a U.S., I'm not a Ukrainian citizen. I, you know, my gotcha. official residence is, is in the U.S., um and uh, yeah so for me for me uh, you know uh, they were letting foreigners out and, and the embassy told me that you know that there's you know support also on the border to let to let you you know u.s citizens um through so i i wasn't really um concerned about that um yeah so it's certainly good news so now that you have gotten across the border um we know it's still relatively fresh and there's a lot going on you're still sharing on social media um one of the things that I seen that I thought was interesting, and you mentioned your wife's business earlier in this uh, chat with me, uh, you shared that there was essentially a missile strike. There was video of it that you shared and posted that was uh, just a few blocks away. Uh, it was just astounding. I mean, I, a lot of the stuff that you've shared, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm speechless as somebody who hasn't encountered that. I'm sure a lot of others are. I can only imagine what it's like for you and your wife, you know, knowing the park that you used to stroll through all of a sudden was a yeah. ground zero for a bomb. It's, it, we still, I still can't imagine. I still can't process it through my mind. We still keep talking to each other like, this must be a bad dream. This just doesn't seem real. We were just at home. Everything was fine, you know, like just a few days ago. And, and now it's not there. Um, it's, it's just surreal. I, I, I can't explain it, but, you know, as I said, our, our, um, our adrenaline has not got calmed down, but as soon as we cross the border, like right away, your attention turns, how do we help our family? How do we help our friends? How do we help our friends, our friends? How do we help others? So that's what we've been focused on. And actually like right before I joined in the call with you, I've also been put in touch with, um, it's, it's called the international rescue committee. Cause I'm looking basically for a large organization that helps refugees that I can partner with because basically I want to use the fame that I've gotten now and the traction I you know I want to be able to maybe like raise some funds uh, and help other refugees with housing with food and eventually maybe even you know inside the country but I want to do it in partnership with you know with a large and trustworthy organization so to me it's you know it's really really important that that, that you know that it's done right so um that's what I'm kind of trying to do but from what I understand all these organizations to them you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to set this up. This is such a, such a shock and such a disaster. They, they just don't have, you know, a way to help, you know, millions of people right away in such short notice. So, so for now, I think the best I can do is just kind of help people one by one, you know, and what I'm going to do now after we jump off the call is I'm going to go through all the people that have reached out to me that, that said, you know, I have a house people can stay in for so long. I'm going to make a list of this and then I'm going to see, and I'm going to try to connect it with people who actually need, or who just crossed the border, right? who need a place to stay. So, um, and as well as like people who've offered, you know, to financially help, you know, maybe I'll just connect them with, if they can just send money to like, I don't know, to, to rent a home or, or, or to, you know, to a restaurant, whatever it is. So uh, I'll just try to help like on a one-to-one -one basis until I can actually, uh, partner with some organization and do this on, on, on a wider scale because I think the great thing about the poker community, you know, specifically, is just how supportive they are, you know, um, you know, uh, of situations like this. And, and I think uh, we can do a lot of good. I think together with the poker community, I think we can do, we can do a lot of good to to uh, for refugees as and then eventually, hopefully, uh, in terms of like rebuilding uh, infrastructure in Ukraine. So that's that's kind of how I see things. Yeah, and by all means, if and when there's developments and, you know, if you do partner with somebody, keep in touch with myself or, you know, put it out there on social media. As you said, the poker community can be pretty strong and we're all, uh, you know, behind you and want to help in any way we can. I mean, just the fact that you went through what you did, you shared it and, and you're still, uh, you know, doing what you can. Is there any thought uh, about trying to make your way to the United States at, at some point? So I think as of now, uh, I got this apartment for another week at least. I, th I think we want to stay close to the border. I think uh, on the ground, we, we can be more helpful in case logistically we can also be helpful because my, my wife and our friends, um, you know, in case any kind of support is needed to, 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 to intake people, we want to be here for it. Um, so we were thinking about going to Italy where, where my company is, you know, where, where, where my company is with, with Luca Pagano. I mean, we have a huge gaming house there that, that can support at least, you know, at least a few families. 
So we were thinking about going there, but honestly, we just decided that, you know, I think it's best to stay here. And, uh, you know, um, I think perhaps we can, we can open up the house uh, in Italy to, to, to some other families um, that need it. But for, for now, I think we'll just kind of stay close to the border. Uh, you know, from here, I think it's easy to, to leave. I don't, I don't think I can be particularly effective from the U.S. Uh, man, Eugene, I got to tell you, everything that you've went through, I can't even imagine. Um, I'm so appreciative that you took time out of everything that's going on to, to chat with me and, and share this story with more of the poker masses. Um, I know you and family and friends are all in our thoughts. It's, um, uh, it's crazy. And just, I guess, for lack of saying anything better, just keep up the good work, man. What you're doing is thanks, inspiring. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm just so it's, glad you're safe. I, Thank you. I, I honestly, I think absolutely everyone in my place would do, would do, you know, would do what I'm trying to do now if, if they were able to get out to help others. Mm -hmm. So, so there's, there's really nothing there, but I just wanted to, like my role now is also to just kind of shed light as to just, just exactly what's going on. Because right, right now we, we, the worst is in front of us. It's not behind us. So, so it's really a critical time. The next couple of days are, are going to be really scary. And, you know, I'm always in touch with a few, few other friends who did not want to leave Kiev, who did not want to leave Kharkiv. I think they finally made a decision um, to leave. Uh, you actually, one is, one is a poker player, like, for, uh, 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 which I'm sure, you know, he's one of, you know, one of the top yeah. Ukrainian players. Um, you know, he's planning to head out tomorrow morning with his family and, you know, and, and a few friends. So I've been, you know, constantly in touch with them and advising him on, you know, what to expect and which routes to take. So, um, you know, we're still kind of, you know, we still have close people who are there who are trying to get out. Um, so, or at least get to, get to the West coast, at least get to, uh, you know, a safer area, uh, where they can, you know, kind of be with their families and, and protect their families. Um, so, um, you know, as I said, like the, 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 unfortunately, the worst is yet to come. And this is an unprecedented situation that is actually dangerous for the whole world. You know, I think yeah. not just for Ukraine, because Ukraine right now is just it's just a battlefield. Uh, but this can really get out of hand because honestly, I I don't see how uh, Putin can afford to lose this war. I don't see how he can win and I don't see how he can lose. So it's, it's a very scary place to be. Um, so. I, obviously, this is a, a very mainstream story that's going to affect the whole world in our niche in the poker world. You certainly become, you know, the conduit to, to the story. And I appreciate, uh, as I said, you taking the time to chat with us and all the updates you're doing on social media. I encourage anybody listening who wants to keep on top of this, follow Eugene at Eugene Kachalov on Twitter. And man, please stay in touch. Uh, you know, anything we can do to, to help support and uh, just know that you are in the thoughts and prayers of the entire poker community and uh, so thankful that you and uh, your wife managed to make it out safely. Thank you, Chad. That's great. And, and just a final message. If anyone, you know, if anyone has, you know, a place or if they can house someone in Europe and, you know, for, for whatever period of time, just tell them to reach out to me directly in private, you know, on Twitter, just so I can, you know, put it in a list, and, you know, uh, in case it becomes needed.